Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal. You're my boy, bro. Yo, it. It. A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah. TV. Nice. Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more from deep inside the Man Cave. Your host, Elias. Chris, welcome to the cave. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what's going on, man? You've been busy. What's going on with you? I have. I, I feel like um, the – actually, this year has been – well, January had a little bit going on, but uh, February I've been able to relax, um, which has been nice because I've been uh, working quite a bit, which I don't want to complain about. It's a great problem to have. But, yeah. Um, it's been nice just to kind of like – chill out and then out and spend some time with my dog and um yeah just relax yeah. so you've been busy with you know with hallmark movies and now you're on the series called uh when it calls the heart and we'll talk about that yeah, but, the heart. yeah when I, so i want the listeners to get to know about you uh where are you originally from i grew up in vancouver canada All right. uh, west coast west coast of canada yeah how yeah. was how was it growing up there grow up. it was awesome it's a, it's a fantastic city you know, it's um it's not too big, and it's nestled right in um, in between the ocean and uh, a whole bunch of mountains. So you kind of it's one of those places where you can go snowboarding or skiing in the morning, and then if you wanted to go swimming, you could. I mean, it would be really cold, but yeah. you can go swimming in the ocean on the same day. Do, do you still do you still reside there? Uh, I am back and forth. Back. Uh, one called the heart actually films up there. Okay. So um, when I'm when I'm back working, I'm I'm back at home, yeah. um, but I'm currently in in LA. Yeah. So uh, growing up there, uh, what were you into? Uh, I was I was kind of all over the board, really. I did some um, some music. I used to be in a jazz band. Oh, nice. <laughs> Although I haven't picked up my my saxophone in about uh, ten years, so I don't know how much of it has stuck. But yeah, I used to do music, and uh, I was into sports as well. And um, I used to teach taekwondo. Uh, for quite a while, and I tried. I tried a little bit of everything. I tried football. I wasn't very good at it. Um, played soccer for a while, but didn't really excel at that either. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, let's see. Sorry, go ahead. Look, I was gonna say, growing up in Canada, they, uh, did you get into hockey at all? I did. Yeah, I played hockey. Um, I joined kind of late, though. I mean, I think I was maybe fourteen, thirteen, fourteen, and and I, I said I wanted to pick it up. And my parents were very accommodating and. Uh, let me join. Um, so I had I had a little bit of a handicap there. I was I was way behind everyone else, but it was still fun to get out and play. Yeah. I played for a few years. So as a you kid, kind of have to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Like, because I know, I know, like, I have some friends that live in Canada. You know, they grew up there, and like hockey got thrown right at them right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To be honest, it got thrown at me right away too when I was I think six or something like that. And then um, I, I, for whatever reason, had a terrible day. And I left crying, but I don't ever want to do that again. And I said, okay, moving on to the next thing. And, uh, and then later I was like, why didn't you push me? Why didn't you say stick it out? Because <laughs> uh, I wish I had, I wish I'd played from that age. But... How did you get involved with uh, martial arts and Taekwondo? Um, I originally started with karate when I was pretty young. I, I, I don't remember whether I expressed interest or whether my parents said, hey, this is something you want to try, but um, just taking classes, karate classes at the uh, rec center, and then a taekwondo school opened up about three blocks from my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And they said, hey, this is right here. Do you want to just do that instead? And I said, yeah. So I um, started training there and then eventually ended up working there and, and teaching there. And um, that was, it was a pretty big part of my life until I was in my early 20s. So do you, still, do you still keep active with it? Uh, I'm going to do a couple of fight scenes, yeah. And uh, and I always ask, can I do my own uh, my own stunts? And I, they always say, no, no, we've got your stunt double. So we're going to just, you know, try the <laughs> rehearsal and our blocking. And, and then um, I guess I do an okay enough job. So like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, no, you just stay in there. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. I've had a lot of, you know, I've had a few guests on, you know, they have background in fighting and everything, and they always want to do their stunts and they get a big no right mm-hmm. away. <laughs> Every time, yeah, and I understand why. You know, if you hurt yourself, it's a it's a big problem for production. Yeah. But selfishly, it's so much fun. Okay. So, when you were a kid, did you know you wanted to be an actor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I did. Um, but I had a kind of a misunderstanding of um, of what that meant. I just I thought that 
you could just go out and do it and you didn't have to train or anything and it's just something that, that one does and so I had my, my parents hooked me up with an agent when I was um, when I was a kid and I did a couple commercials and a couple small roles on uh, on a few local TV shows but honestly I don't know why they hired me because I was absolutely terrible like <laughs> really really bad um, and then once I finished high school I kind of realized oh I guess I'm actually I'm not very good at this I need to <laughs> I think they actually train. So rather than um, going to university or college, I decided to enroll in, uh, in acting classes. Did you, uh, were those acting classes in Canada or did you go right to LA? They were in uh, in Vancouver for the most part. I did come down to LA for a few years ago for um, a few months and I, I tried out some classes down there. But no, most, most of everything I've done has, has been in different um, private studios around Vancouver. Right. How, how long were those acting classes? How many years did you do uh, the classes for? Uh, well, it's been going about 10 years now. Okay. Um, 10 or 11 years I've been doing them. Yeah. I think the longest I stuck at one studio was uh, six years, and I still go, um, I still do frequent. I'm actually, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go up to Canada and take um, like a two week uh, scene study intensive up there just because I love the environment, I love the teachers there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I'd say the longest I've been at one studio. Is so like, classic. so what made you pursue acting? Like, was there like a did you see a certain movie someday or a TV show and you're like, this is what I want to do? Well, I always I don't I I don't remember having a um, a deciding factor being like oh this has now made the path clear for me. Yeah. But I think because my my older cousins were acting and. I think I probably looked up to them and thought, you know, they're so cool. They're, they're my older cousins and I want to be like them and, and they're acting. So I have to act, but, um, but I honestly, I just, I really, I really enjoy it. And so, yeah, I, I always knew that I wanted to do it, but then there was later on, um, I, I watched, um, I've had two pivotal moments, I'd say, where it, it more solidified my decision that this is what I wanted to pursue. And one was watching Mystic River. Uh, Sean Penn's one of my favorite actors. And watching him in that film just, I don't know, it kind of it just uh, it changed something in me where I yeah. I felt something I hadn't felt before. And I was like, no, I think this really is, I really do want to be in this field. And then... Uh, the second one was this was phenomenal Broadway actor named Mark Rylance who's been um, he's been he's popped up in in movies over here in in, uh, in Hollywood recently I'd say in the last few years but I saw him do this play called Jerusalem he won the Tony for it and he was like that's the most insane riveting performance I've ever seen in my life it was wow. like unlike anything it was so mind blowing. So that's number two that, that really had a nail on top and said, yeah. yeah, no, I want to look forward to this. And someday, hopefully, be able to be a part of productions like this one. Yeah. So what? Uh, so while you were taking your classes, what was the first, uh, like, real gig that you landed? I think it was, uh, it was on, you know the show Supernatural? Yes, on CW. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was on that, and I don't think I even said anything actually I, I, it was just in the teaser trailer I see somebody get shot and I, I'm, I work in a restaurant I'm taking the trash out um, in the alley and somebody gets shot in front of me and I just I go I think I, I can't go oh my god and they go cut and Chris you can't say anything because then they have to pay anymore they go, oh, oh right okay and then I do it again they go, Chris no you can't even mouth it you like you literally can't form any words in kind at all and I go, oh okay. I think I'm getting in trouble but um, coincidentally it was like I think it was about a block away from the acting school I was going to at the time that we were shooting, so mm. I felt like that was uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah. What uh, What other work have you done besides uh, Hallmark? Because I know Hallmark is like your your big thing right now. Yeah, Hallmark's been great to me uh, recently. Um, I did. I worked for Lifetime. There's um, a film coming out in the summer called Heaven. It's part of a five part series by um, the books by Reese and the Andrews, um, the Heaven Castile sort of chapter of. of She's got a whole bunch of these novels. Uh, and I got to work, it was, I was in a few episodes, it wasn't anything huge, but uh, working on Altered Carbon for Netflix was a blast. That was, that was pretty rad. They just had such a huge yeah. crew, so much going on, so much money, like everything was super elaborate. So, yeah, that's fun. so now you're in the series One Calls the Heart and you play Lucas. Uh, 
Tell us how how do tell the listeners a little bit like what the show is about. It's uh, it's about a woman from well, it takes place in the early 1900s, and it's about a woman from the city who um, grew up very posh, who wants to be a teacher. She ends up getting a job um, as a school uh, elementary school teacher in um, this rural town, and so it's about her kind of trying to adapt to small town life, rural life, and she's obviously she's kind of. Um, disregarded and shunned at, at the beginning, and, and you know you're never going to last a week in this in these um, conditions. Uh, but then, but she overcomes it. And she becomes a part of the town and, and finds love and um, friends. And so yeah, it's just now it's become an ensemble about the group of people that are um, are living in this tiny town called Hope Valley in Alberta, Canada. And uh, this year, it, this season, I think is uh, the year 1916. <clears throat> So now, uh, how did you land that role? How were you approached for the show? Uh, I Two ways, actually. I got a call from my L.A. manager saying, hey, they want Hallmark wants you to read for this role, Lucas Bouchard, um, here in L.A. And I said, great, okay, I'll go into that. And I think about 30 minutes later, I got a call from Canada, my agent in Canada, saying, hey, Hallmark wants you to tape for this project. Uh, one called the heart for this character, uh, Nathan Grant, who's the other male lead that they introduced this season. So I actually auditioned for both characters and then um, ended up doing a chemistry read for Nathan, the Mountie, the other character, and did that with Erin uh, Krakow, who plays Elizabeth. She's the, the lead of the show, and it went. I had a great time. I think it went really well, and I think Erin felt that way too, and, and they asked me if I could stick around and read... Um, do a chemistry read as Lucas. And I said, yeah, sure. I already kind of, you know, I auditioned for it last month. I know the side. So I took a little bit of time with them in the, in the hall and came back in and um, redid the chemistry read as Lucas and then found out about it a week later that I was cast in that role. Hmm. So it was a little bit back and forth. Yeah. It looked like it was Nathan was, was going the right way, but then uh, turned around and now I'm Lucas. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about Lucas. Uh, what kind of a character is he? Lucas is really fun to play. He's he's a bit of a mystery. He's an enigma. Um, he's kind of he's he's young. He seems to have a lot of money. Um, he's super flashy with his clothes and style, and he loves gambling. Like poker is his jam. Um, but yet he won't say anything about where he's from, uh, where he has all his money from, um, why he's in Hope Valley. Um, so that he's kind of. This is a bit like, like this mysterious onion, and every episode a layer gets peeled off, and you learn a little bit more about him. Yeah. He, he's just he's a, he's a really he's a really fun guy to play, to be honest. And yeah. I'm happy that I got cast as Lucas. So how do you how did you prepare for a role like that, for Lucas? I I think the writing does a lot of it. The language. Um, first of all, I think that they did a great job writing Lucas. I think he's he's just so much fun. But I took his. I took his dialogue and got an energy from that and then sort of layering in other aspects like, well, what's his backstory? Uh, why isn't he saying anything about where he's from? What could that mean? And then I also um, wanted to take a little bit of, have you seen Tombstone? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, Val Kilmer. So it's like I, I wanted to have a little bit of Val Kilmer, Doc Holliday in, in Tombstone, although it's for Hallmark, so it's a totally different genre. But yeah. I like to have a little a little pep in my step making. A part of me is inspired by Doc Holliday. Just a tad, just a sprinkle. <laughs> so, so how is working with somebody like Aaron and even Lori Laughlin? Awesome. They're fantastic. Aaron and Lori were very, very conscious of um, of Kevin McGarry and I when we came onto set because they've all been working together for five years. This is their six. That was was their six years together. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, we were both kind of outsiders, and uh, Daniel Lissing, who um, played Jack Thornton, who was the original love interest, had, had left the show, and so it was sort of a, an odd situation. And they were just so on the ball in terms of making sure that we were comfortable, that we felt welcome. They're super kind, and they're both they're really good actors as well. So it was just a, it was great. I'm super grateful uh, that, that those two are a part of this team mm-hmm. and were able to welcome us in. <clears throat> So the show recently just premiered. Do you have a favorite scene that you're in so far that you can talk about? 
Uh, well, I actually come in on Sunday, so I wasn't okay. in. I wasn't. I haven't appeared yet. Um, but they did. One one scene I really did enjoy. They released a sneak peek, so I feel like it's um, fair to talk about it. Uh, but it's when Lucas first meets Elizabeth, and he's um, my character's coming and bought the saloon in the town, and I'm unpacking, um, you know whiskey and whatnot off the, off the cart <clears throat> to load up into the saloon and she's walking by and sees my sign that says help wanted inquire within and um, I try right off the bat to hire her as a, a waiter um, and she doesn't really she, she kind of leaves me along and like oh well what makes you think I'd be good for this well, you know, are, are you sure I'd be good at this and I'm, going, I'm super confident and Lucas is like yeah you know I can read people it's what I do because um, I guess he's, he's a gambler uh, good at poker, but anyway, he totally puts his foot in his mouth this turns out that she's the school teacher and that she has a wedding ring on and he didn't realize either of those things. So it was a nice way to um, kind of fall off my horse right away. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so last year you were in a big lead in the Hallmark movie, The Sweetest Heart, which had huge ratings. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Sweetest Heart was fun. That was the first, um, the first lead I'd done for Hallmark. And uh, it was a part of their spring fever movies. And um, so I played a, a cardiologist who um, had a high school sweetheart, decided that he needed to go off and study and become a doctor and go and move out of the town. So um, left love to go study, pursue my career. And then I end up, um, I'm gunning for this big promotion. And in order to do that and try to pack on these, this extracurricular um sort of it's like a seminar program about um treating patients better and having bedside manner and so i'm trying to do this extra work for the promotion and one of the hospitals i go and do the seminar at is my uh, my hometown um hospital and i i end up seeing that my high school sweetheart had opened up the bakery that she always talked about she was great at making cupcakes uh, so that i kind of wander in and haven't seen her in 10 years or something like that and and that's where the movie kind of kicks off. Yeah. Uh, they find love again. And it's Hallmark, so yes. But you know. yeah. What was the reaction to that movie since they had the, since the ratings were that good? From like what fans. Was, sorry, what was my reaction? Like, well, yeah, what was your reaction? Oh, like, what was, was the reaction? Yeah, like the fans and everything. I actually, I feel like I didn't see too much from it, to be honest. Okay. I think Julie Gonzalo may have more. I, I gained some followers on Instagram and, and a couple of people saying, you know, reading comments being like, I, I you know, really enjoyed it. Um, thank you. And that kind of thing. Nice stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't actually, I didn't do any press for that movie and I kind of, it was my first experience and I didn't know what was happening. To be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I saw much more with um, My Call to Heart. Yeah. As soon as Laurie tweeted it. I sent out a photo on Instagram of saying, welcome, Chris. That's, <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, yeah. I don't, you know, who are some, who are like some of your uh, influences in the acting world? Was there somebody that you looked up to that you're trying to model yourself after? I mean, I know most of you are trying to, you know, try to do your own thing, but is there like somebody that you look up to? Oh, yeah. There's, there's tons. Um, well, Sean Penn, I really looked up to. Um, he hasn't done any Hallmark movies yet, but maybe someday he will. <laughs> um, no, I have, in terms of uh, of a career trajectory, I don't know that, I'm just trying to trying to um, carve my way and find my own path right now, and, and I'm happy to be to be a working actor. Yeah. If I could, in the future, um, you know, years down the line, I would love to be doing things like... Um, I love that Ryan Gosling is a fellow Canadian. Um, and uh, Michael Shannon does phenomenal work. Uh, so I, Benedict Cumberbatch, I like a lot too. Um, I'd love to get into the feature world down the line. And, okay. You know, only, only work once or twice a year, but, but work on projects that I think are really fascinating and inspiring. Do you have a, do you like a dream role that you hope you can play someday? Hmm. Well, if they ever if they ever redo Game of Thrones and I could somehow go back in age 
I really want to be Jon Snow. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones. Um, I'd, say, no, I'd say a dream role would be kind of somewhere in that realm because I, I do love um, like fantasy and, and dragons and castles and knights and stuff. So if I could, if I could play some kind of um, some kind of guy who was kind of an outcast okay. and trying to fight his way to the top and ends up being a, a leader of, of sorts, I think that would be really fun. Yeah. That's interesting. I know, like most, uh, you know, I have people say, like, "Oh, I want to be a superhero. Or I want to play the president of the United States." Nobody has said uh, Game of Thrones yet. You're the first one. I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I would way rather do that than be a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's a fun fact uh, that you want the listeners to know about you? Fun fact about me: um, I'm really OCD when it comes to light bulbs, and I know it's kind of random, but it's like I. I have all, all my lights are on dimmers because I can't, I need it to be, I guess I love soft uh, ambient lighting. And um, I remember I was traveling once with a friend and every restaurant we went into had, we were in Spain, I think all the restaurants had these fluorescent lights. And I just, I was, <laughs> it was like, funny. It, was like, it doesn't matter, man, can you just calm down? <laughs> um, yeah. There you go. But I just couldn't relax. Like I can't sit down and have a a nice meal with um, fluorescent lighting. So, so I don't know. That's kind of a weird odd. <laughs> what uh? So when you're not acting, what do you what do you do for fun? What are some of your hobbies? I love camping. I'm big into camping, and uh, I'm right now. I'm trying to. Um, I got a, like a a project car. I've got a um, fourth generation four runner that I'm trying to turn into an overland vehicle so i just got a, a new suspension put on like three days ago which i'm pretty excited about and roof rack and um got some armor coming forward and yeah i'm just kind of slowly converting it into this uh car that i can i can go off the grid and be self-sufficient for a week or two weeks at a time if i if i want to yeah. so that's my current yeah. current hobby and project do you have a like a, you said camping is do you have a favorite spot that you enjoy that you, you always like to go to I mean, in Vancouver, I there must, do, be, must um, be tons of camping areas in Vancouver. Yeah. There's so much. So, yeah, I have a, I do have a favorite spot in Vancouver, but I've yet to discover. I'm, I'm still trying to kind of, I'm new to California, so I'm trying to explore and um, and find find the good spots out here. But um, Pemberton, I'd say, is my favorite area in, uh, in BC. It's about a two and a half hour drive from Vancouver, and there's some amazing spots up there, natural hot springs and beautiful hiking campsites and um little about lake is stunning um yeah it's, it's great hmm. so uh lastly uh how can the listeners uh find you on social media i'm on instagram uh just my name uh chris mcnally and i do have twitter but to be honest i i don't know the last time i logged on and that's <laughs> <any tweet. laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah mostly just instagram I post pictures every once in a while of, uh, of my dogs and me, projects that are coming up. There you go. Uh, is there anything else you want to listen to before we, before we end this? Uh, no, I just hope, um, you know, hope they enjoy the, the listen and uh, if you have any questions or anything, hit me up on Instagram. All right. Thank you, Chris. This was fun. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Time to read.